Welcome back, technical traders. This is the Humble Chartis. Today, I'll be doing a technical breakdown on Zebra Tech and Zero Group. Tico symbol ZBRA and Z respectively. Before we begin, please take a second to give the video a like and subscribe for more charting and price manipulations. I deeply appreciate those who have liked and subscribed to my videos and channel. I'll first start off by analyzing the daily charts, followed by the weekly charts and monthly if necessary. So today's analyze, um, I'll be analyzing two stocks, which uh, is actually uh, requested by Mary. The request is that uh, there are earnings coming up, so she's a bit uh, uncertain about what are the price actions ahead. So personally, uh, Zebra Tech have, have had a very strong uptrend. And the uptrend lasted for almost about coming to uh, two years, in fact. So when the stock is an uptrend, it's always very difficult to go against the trend. You can see that it, it never really had significant pullbacks. It always had a very good uptrend. And now it looks slightly a bit toppish. In fact, the concern here is that when on an uptrend, we always will form uh, higher highs and higher lows. So higher lows meaning like uh, this was the low here, the low was here, the low was here, and the low was here. So generally, the, we will form higher lows. However, look at it now, we are in fact um, forming um, lower lows. So it's an indication that perhaps the stock has um, tends to, it will be reversing soon. And the big players may have already distributed or are on the way to shorting. So generally speaking, uh, when it comes to results day, it is usually um, not advisable to touch or open your positions because there is high volatility and we do not really know the direction of where the um, stock will go to. You can see that um, at this um, portion here, we had a high and then we did a significant pullback. But when we tried to go above again, we failed to break, break up this high. In fact, it was like a fake breakout at these levels here, slightly higher to this. So it's actually a form of distribution. You do a fake breakout, retail investors come in and um, take the breakout, and that's where the big players will do, uh, slam it down. And looking at it, now we are below the charts, below the clouds. So it's an indication of um, very bearish, bearish looking. If you look at the Fibonacci, let me take a look at the weekly charts. Let's take a look at the Fibonacci. Usually, if a chart is strong, right, it will usually hold uh, certain positions. So you can see that uh, at this point, we managed to hold uh, this 78.6% uh, here, FI02 at this peak here. However, now we actually do not see this anymore. If you take to the recent high, we are actually seeing that this 78.6% um, is being breached and it tries to go back, go back above. So we are looking at the very potential support at 61.8 and about 437. And now we are about 503, which is about $60, $70 difference. So in the event that there is a um, um, bad news or earnings that are below expectations, I do believe that we may fall to those levels. Um, currently, we are under cloud support. You can clearly see that on the weekly charts, there is some cloud support here. So there may be some resistance all the way to a low of 400. So there will be some resistance, I mean, uh, support rather, when on the way down. Likewise, if we were to go to the daily charts, in the event of good results or above expectations, I do expect a, a climb up to about 535, which is this red line over here, to a high about maybe perhaps 555, this range here, where we do see some cloud resistance. So if there's a um, good news ahead, or above expectations, then we can potentially climb to this uh, level. But if there is bad news, perhaps uh, below expectations or um, under expectations, then we can potentially see a bigger drop to about 400, 400 to about 430 range, which is um, can be quite scary. Uh, looking at this, the MACD, you can see that the MACD, daily MACD has uh, already cut from above at this height here, somewhere here. And we never really crossed over until recently when we did some uh, accumulation and rebound here. But nevertheless, it's important to note that there are red candles. Setting pressure is very strong. Look at all these red candles here. 
that means their big players are in fact um, uh, already uh, con uh, considered sell, uh, sold off their positions already. So you need to be very mindful. Definitely the uh, daily MACD is turning up because of a short uh, term rebound, but it can always go down and do a fake um, rebound and then continue going down further to about 430 levels. Let's take a look at the weekly charts to see whether the MACD give us a better picture. So the MACD on a weekly chart is always more accurate. You can see that it cut once here, it cut somewhere here, and then it went up above here and tried to cut again one more time at this level. And before going down, and last time, do a fake uh, cutting up, and then it goes here. And now we, are, we have turned bearish. So I do not really expect much from this particular stock because the big players may have already uh, cut their positions and they have already distributed along to retail investors. So definitely this will be uh, pretty bearish. Uh, I do not really expect good results coming ahead. So let's take a look now at uh, Zillow Group. Uh, because symbol will just be Zach. Um, this particular stock, is, uh, it seems to me that uh, it was like a, a syndicate that came in to do a pump and dump. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what happened in June 2020, this period here. Okay, you see a sudden spike and then we had a very good uptrend all the way. So personally, uh, I will not touch stocks that went up too fast quickly and never assume that when a stock has a big drop on the way down you try to buy, that's not really advisable. Usually, uh, what, what does it mean by uh, when the price is too obvious, that's where the best chance to come out. You see these two green, green candles here? These two continuous green candles that happen along the weekly charts. When the price becomes too obvious, that's where the retail investors will come in and FOMO, which is actually the best time where the big players actually um, clear their positions and distribute to the retail investors. And that's where you buy the buy high and then you never cut your positions and then you hold all the way down, which is um, um, very bad. Um, in fact, you can see some rebounds here. Whenever a downtrend stock has rebounds, it is actually a good time to either cut losses or you take uh, small profits if you are a trader and manage to catch the bottom. But nevertheless, I do not really see much um, potential reversal from this stock. You can see that the weekly charts is not looking too good. It's uh, still drifting down and there's no potential reversal. The candles here, the volume, not much of a volume. And you look at that, we are way below the clouds. It's not a good indication at all. Let's take a look at the, um, let's return back to the daily charts and take a look. You can see that we are drifting down uh, from the, down all the way below the clouds and we continue remaining below the clouds. This time we try to break above it, but we continue going down. Um, on the way down, the worst thing of a stock is that when it comes down too slowly, because when it comes down too slowly, people will think that there's a chance of reversal. But the slower it comes down, um, the more retail get hurt, the more retail will come in. And look at the um, daily MACD, we are not even turning up at all. There is totally no green histograms appearing, so it's not a good sign. Unless we manage to cut above it, like this time here, around somewhere in November, 2020, uh, November 2019, 2020, and that's where there's a potential reversal. But uh, until now, I don't see any potential reversal. And the earnings are coming up. So if the earnings are coming up and yet we are still downtrending, that means insiders have no potential or no, um, no reason to buy up the shares. So that means I, I'm assuming that it will tend to be um, not too good results. Even if it's good results, the potential upside may not be too much. So nevertheless, um, if you are holding this stock, then you, you, you can continue holding. But if you wish to cut loss, then you can consider cutting loss when there are small small rebounds along the way. Yep. Uh, that being said, um, just a reminder that uh, downtrending stocks, if best, try not to hold, try not to buy, or don't, don't think of averaging down or, at all. So if there's anything else, uh, I will give you guys an update. Uh, thanks a lot for Mary for um, introducing these two particular stocks. I hope that I did a good analysis for you. And thank you guys for stopping by and to check out the rest of my channel. Leave in the comment section on your thoughts on these two particular stocks or if you have any other TA requests. Do also share this with your friends who are interested in market manipulation. Lastly, I do appreciate any feedback to improve the video content for you guys. Till we meet again, appreciate the manipulation.